Hello there, Scorpio. Conflicting messages for you. Um, I think they're both applicable to, you know, the group of you that are watching this. But it made me a little bit sad. But um, let me just relay the, the images for you. So the first image is, uh, I see this man. He's, um, you know, wearing like some type of an office outfit, like a white shirt and um, pinstripe pants okay so he just got home it's it's um he opens the door leading to his home and you can see in the background it's it's uh it's dark like it's the sun has already set so he's had a long day at work he comes home and there are like toys and stuff just strewn all over the hallway in the living room and so he proceeds to um he hangs up his coat he puts away his briefcase and then he picks up the things on the ground and puts them into a nice pile or puts them where they belong. So I feel like you're doing a massive amount of cleanup after another person. For some of you, this can be, you know, cleaning up things at work, but I feel like it's more in the domestic environment where things are... Um, misplace you might be sharing space or you might be living with another person who is um, kind of like you know organized chaos okay who is not big on either cleanliness oh, this came out or who's not very responsible when it comes to putting things back where they found them and in a way I almost feel like who might not be respectful when it comes to shared space living arrangement rules and regulations regarding you know uh, where we need to keep things and it's just somebody who might be a little bit inconsiderate okay so this man comes home after a really long hard day at work and yet he's he's got other things that he has to take care of so needless to say I feel like this is a month where the work just never ends that's what it feels like to me you have real work that you have to do at uh, at work and then when you come home and you want to just kick up your feet and you know not have to deal with responsibilities there are yet still more responsibilities so that made me a little bit sad because um like i mentioned for you guys you know a lot of the times i i i think i've mentioned this in many many scorpio uh, videos you guys do a lot for the people that you love. You do a lot, and I've never seen a Scorpio person complain. Okay, um, especially when you love somebody, but you know you can't. You you love them, but you don't like them. You will um, vent, or you will complain to your best friend, to your closest confidant, but you will never ever say hurtful things to the person that you love, even though you can't stand them. Um, and so I feel like there are definitely things that needs to be discussed, okay? We definitely have to make our feelings known and we have to, you know, um, what is not fair is, is it needs to be straightened out, okay? So whatever situation that has been unaddressed regarding people's responsibilities, there needs to be discussions about responsibilities. There needs to be discussions about, you know, who's doing what, divvying up responsibilities and holding people accountable. So a lot of water signs, they overlook all of these little annoyances. Um, but the important thing is, you know, we have to be in agreement with another person over how things are done, over the, the give and take and the, the shared responsibilities. It's all the shared responsibilities that can breed a lot of resentment that can, you know, if unaddressed, the hostility can, um, can surface, can build up, can fester. I'm using this fester um, analogy or, you know, con the concept of things festering because you, you guys are really, really scared about things festering. So I want you to just, you know, air out, you know, air out your dirty laundry, talk about all of these unequivocal give and take in a situation because I feel like you're running yourself ragged for another person in order to, it's, it's not even like maintaining the peace because you guys are not conflict avoidant. It's not about maintaining the peace. It's just you don't mind doing these things because from your perspective, it's a labor of love. You know, 
you understand that nobody's perfect and you so I think it's gonna rain in like a few hours so it looks like you know dark clouds are rolling in but they're still a ways away they're still out in the distance so he's like okay um, I, I have probably two and a half three hours to get all the yard work done before the the rain falls it call, um, rolls in and so he proceeds to get his lawnmower, he proceeds to get the gardening hose or, you know, clean up the yard and does whatever he needs to. And then he's like, I'm feeling kind of tired, but I have to push through it because I only have like that short window of time. And so what I see is the dark clouds start rolling in. And it seems like there's some entity in the sky and they're like, let's give this guy a few more hours. And so all of a sudden you see like rays of sunlight breaking through the dark clouds. It's like melting them away or evaporating them. And so he sees this, this you know, the, the, the streaks of sunlight leaking through. And he's all like, oh, that's weird. So then he feels inspired to keep doing his work. And so I feel like there's definitely somebody watching over you. Okay. Um, somebody is watching over you, whatever it is that you believe in. You know, some people believe that there's something out there. And it's so weird because you have cards in here that are flipped over. Anyways, so there's definitely something watching over you, watching out for you, looking out for you. And I almost feel like changing the circumstances that you're in in order to help you along. Okay, so you have some really strong divine protection, some strong guidance, and I swear, I feel like all the good deeds that you're doing is coming back home to roost. So that's why I saw the first image first, where you're just like, you know, somebody has to do this. It takes me like three minutes. I'm not going to sit there and whine about it. And so I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get it done. You don't keep scores. You don't, uh, you know, um, boast over, I did this yesterday, so you need to do it today. You're not one to keep scores. You're not one to, you know, um, I, I guess like compare and, and contrast, like, you know, the, the, the give and take in a relationship. And I feel like you do it out of the goodness of your heart. And that's why I feel as well. That's why the universe is really rewarding you for your hard work for the, the, the uh, selfless way in which you give of yourself to other people. And so um, let me just say this. I feel like there's a very gendered um, thing going on here. And, and the reason I bring that up is we have here the Knight of Swords and the Queen of Swords, okay? Like, uh, like the, the masculine and the feminine. Um, what I'm feeling is... For those of you that self-identify as, you know, the feminine, I'm almost sensing this uh, concept about you've been jaded, you've been hurt in the past, okay? And so I almost feel like your heart is a little bit uh, closed off. So that's for the, the feminine viewers, okay? If you self-identify as, as like the feminine Scorpio. You could be like, you know, um, in a gay relationship, if you'd identify as the, the more feminine one in the relationship, I feel like you've been hurt many, many times. You were always, always, always given of yourself. And I feel like people took you, like took advantage of it. They thought you were this endless pool of, you know, um, selflessness. They drew from, from your wealth. They drew from it, drew from it, drew from it. And I feel like you gave so much of yourself that at this point you have nothing left to give. Nothing left to give. And you, your heart is a, a little bit closed off. You've turned into this ice queen here, the queen of swords. Her, the sword is right in front of her. And, you know, deep down, like, you know, she, she doesn't look like standoffish, right? She still looks very warm. And the way that she's depicted in this card with the pink, she still has that thread of humanity left in her. She's still, like, a really warm, cuddly person. But she puts on this air that, like, you know, you can't mess with me. You can't touch me. You can't hurt me anymore. But I feel like deep down, for many of you, um, you're sick and tired of being taken advantage of. You're sick and tired of uh, sticking your neck out for other people who take advantage of you 
or who don't deserve it, at the end of the day, you realize that you might have been sticking out for the wrong people. Okay, the ones that were, that you thought, you know, like, were the ride or die for you. Uh, you would do that for them. But when um, it's time for, for you to, it's time for them to return the favor. They're nowhere to be found. So you, you've, you've been in a few situations that really tested your faith in humanity. And you realize as well, I've given so much of myself. I don't have any more to give. What's coming in? is we have healing and this healing energy is basically telling you that um, we don't have to be so hard the lesson for you to learn this is the star card by the way the lesson for you to learn from the past is not to close yourself off but rather be very very selective about who you give your energy to learning proper boundaries okay learning to love ourselves first learning to put ourselves first and learning as well not to enable other people when we constantly step in and interfere out of love we disallow the other person to be self-sufficient to take care of themselves to clean up their own mess and then on top of that we also create an environment where people take us for granted, where people trample all over our goodwill, where people, I, I feel like, you know, um, draw from your endless, what they thought was an endless pool of water, okay? And so you're definitely closing off your heart. And I, I feel like Scorpios, um, the universe is really telling you that, you know, everything that you've done in the past, you did it because you wanted because you love the other person you did it because you love the other person there's no strings attached there's no other reason for it you blindly faithfully and just uh, vehemently you love the other person so you did all of these things and i feel like it's telling you there's nothing wrong with that scorpio it takes a really strong person to be able to do these things for somebody that they love and not keep score and not, you know, go back and forth and, you know, say like, I did this, therefore you have to reciprocate. You never did those things. And even if you thought about, you know, I did this, so you have to reciprocate or I wish you'd do the same for me, you definitely thought that. And so it's, it's making you close your heart. And I feel like there your guides okay your spirit guides are really telling you that um you have to be a little bit more discriminate about who you do this for and you have to definitely make sure the other person is worthwhile i see a situation here where things are turning around okay like a 180 turnaround let me see what this card is we have here the tower as well so it slipped out i'm just going to use it we have the star card, which is healing, being guided into a divine path, as well as the death card, which means we're, it's like once we, once we find ourselves in this type of a situation, we will vow to ourselves to never let it happen again. So I feel like for many of you, it's like never again. I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to go through this, this whole situation again. I'm smarter and wiser having experienced what I've experienced and now I, I can identify like in a down to the minute details you can identify patterns and you can pick out you know like uh, things repeating like you already have this instinctive gift of discernment where you're just like this sounds really familiar or this situation feels really familiar Two years ago, I was in the same predicament and the person said they were going to do this and they turn around and do this. So this time I'm getting the whole spiel. I'm getting the whole sales pitch. I'm not going to let it happen again. And we have the tower. Came in, uh, it came out in the reverse position. So I feel like cycles are being repeated. But having experienced what you have experienced in the past, you're nipping the situation in the bud and you're going to be leaving it behind or you're transforming the ways in which you handle the situation you're not going to you know um, attack the situation the same way you did in the past because it it yielded an outcome that you did not like it made you 
hard, okay? It made you like very, 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 it, it hardened your heart. And now you're just like, let me be a little bit more discerning or let me be a little bit more, let me take a different approach is what I'm feeling. So what we have in this situation here, <clears throat> I'm just going to put the cards back. We have the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles, once again, you know, this farmer uh, looking at the sky, like, is it going to pour? Like, um, hoping, like, it's almost like waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for the, 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 the clouds to roll in, and thinking in a very singular manner. There's no other outcome. The rain is going to pour. But then the, the, you know, the sky broke open, the sun came out. So it's almost like I feel there's a situation where you're just like bracing for impact, thinking about worst case scenario. And yet the worst case scenario never happened. And so they're really asking you to, you know, create some type of a paradigm shift within yourself where we don't focus so much on the negative outcome because you are in a very strong position here to manifest your own destiny, okay? The magician is the manifester. He has everything in front of him laid out meticulously on this table to create the life that he wants, to draw in and push out the things that he wants or, or the things that he doesn't want. And so by operating from this space where you're a little bit closed off, and waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's not, a, it's survival mode. It's not a good place to be. So start manifesting in a positive way. Think about the things that you want to happen rather than dwelling on the things you don't want to repeat of, okay? Um, I feel like you're handling a new situation. There might have been some major, major um, news coming into the picture where you're dealing with another person, possibly an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra, you're taking a different stance. You're taking a different approach. You're possibly moving away from the way in which you handled this situation in the past. Or I feel like there's a, there's a almost like a strategic way in which two people are trying to, you know, work together and trying to fix old situation or trying to work together as a unit okay um so that's for the you know the the more feminine uh scorpio there is as well i feel like you know so for example when i say masculine okay so a lot of my viewers 83 percent at this point on and off each month about 80 to 83 percent are female okay self-identified females and so there is a, another storyline here for the more um, masculine Scorpios. And by masculine, what I mean is if, for example, you have Scorpio moon, right? But your sun sign is in a masculine sign like an Aquarius or a Sagittarius, and you are watching this, this might apply to you. So even if you're female and you your sun sign is in a masculine sign or whatever you identify as, if you're a male Scorpio watching this, this might apply to you. If you are self-identified like a masculine female watching this, so gender is very fluid. I'm not going to dwell on that. So this might even apply for those. They both might be applicable, but who cares? Um, what I'm seeing here is... Um, there's a nesting instinct. There's a, a, a almost like a maternal instinct coming out for you guys, okay? For many of you, especially if you have been, um, I feel like Scorpios, you're very, very aware of um, your, you're very aware of your strength and weaknesses, okay? You're very self-aware. You're very, you know yourself really well. So I'm not dealing with people who are, you know, like, um, who, who don't have self-awareness or who know themselves on a very superficial level. You are totally aware of your shadow side. You're also very aware of your enlightened side. And I'm seeing a lot of people wanting to, you know, change themselves for the better, okay? Wanting to transform, 
wanting to put their best foot forward, understanding what it means to be responsible, understanding what it means to sacrifice for the people that they love, and seeing the proper value in people. You're very aware. You are also very, very aware that there's a situation in your life where somebody is taking you for granted, where the give and take is not balanced. You are totally, totally aware. And I feel like it bothers you more than you let on. You don't want to be taken advantage of. Scorpios hate that. But you're also in a position where you understand that the other person is dealing with their deficits. They have deficits. And so you are aware that they are not perfect. That they might need this extra help because this is not a field of expertise that they're comfortable in or this is not you know their their strength and so you might be helping them clean up you might be helping you know with um with the everyday mundane things because they're just not reliable or they're just not good at doing these things they might be good at other things who knows but you know this is something that they're not good at so you don't mind taking on the responsibilities but i feel like it, it bothers you it bothers you that they don't work on their weaknesses because you guys are, like I said, coming into this sense where you're trying to improve yourself. You're working towards self and betterment. You're trying to make yourself whole. You're trying to work on those shadow side of yourself. And for you know the masculine Scorpio, you're looking at the. You have to look at the situation and you have to look at at it like head on. And just tell yourself, if this is a relationship partner, they're not mature enough for you. Okay? If you get involved with them, you're constantly picking up the pieces that they leave behind. They could do laundry and they could carry a sack of, you know, dirty clothes to put into the washer. And along the way, they've dropped like, you know, five pieces, articles of clothing and then you would find your socks missing and you're dealing with someone who is not self-sufficient who might not be independent and I feel like they admire you and that can be really really flattering but they're dealing with a lot of internal conflict they don't know which direction they want to go and I feel like that's something they need to it's like their karmic destiny to try to work that out for themselves it is not your destiny to interfere with this process. So I feel like you, you, you might have come to a realization that you, you might need to leave somebody behind. In the meantime, for those of you who are single, uh, you've got somebody that's like really uh, high on your tail. I feel like they're really interested in, you know, like they're dealing with this inner conflict. Should I call the Scorpio or should I not? Should I play it cool or should I just tell them everything that I'm feeling? So you're dealing with someone who's very conflicted, who is um, very young, energetically. You know, they could even be older than you age-wise, but they're very, very young at heart and they're kind of irresponsible and they're just, they're not the right person for you is what I'm, I'm saying, okay? And then on the flip side, um, I also feel like there is a situation where some of you are a little bit Scorpio Moon. That combination works really well. So I'm seeing like um, Scorpio Cancer energy and also Aquarius energy. Scorpio Cancer Aquarius, which might be really, really good. Like it, it might be a really good combination for you. Okay. So... That's all I have for you here, Scorpios. Um, don't give up this fight, okay? I feel like there is um, there's a continuation. Like, life goes on, okay? It will get better. But you have to start manifesting the, 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 the rays of sunlight rather than manifest the dark clouds, okay? Um, there's busy energy. I feel like there's a lot to be done. But I feel like you don't need to do this all your, on your own. Make sure people are accountable for the things that they promised they would deliver, okay? So I feel like this is the month where you kind of have to focus on, yeah, they said they were going to do this. I'll see it. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. So wait for the other person to come forth and bring forth whatever it is that they promised on. 
don't contact them and say like did you do that did you you know follow through let them come towards you and 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 see if they can deliver or see if they're making excuses for it okay so i feel like you're you're going to be able to see people's true colors okay so i wish you all the best and uh, best of luck with everything i hope the reading is helpful and for those who are looking for a reader I have a link in the description box below for a psychic out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend that you get a reading for her if you haven't already. So I've included a link to her scheduling website below. Take care of yourself, Scorpios. I'll be back in about two weeks' time for your mid-month reading. Bye.